Good afternoon, everyone. The situation at the Oroville Dam has gone from bad to worse. If you are downstream, you need to seriously consider packing and at least an emergency provision bag that you can run in a moment's notice. This is within a 36 hour period here. The images from the erosion over toward the dam. They're going to need to scale back the runoff coming out of here due to concerns of the erosion of the actual foundation of the dam. As you can see image here in 36 hours, they're going to scale it back to 35,000 cubic feet from the 55,000. Now this is going to add another 20,000 going over the wall of the emergency spillway just from that pullback as well. They were so unprepared for this that they were pouring emergency concrete 12 hours earlier at the base of the spillway where it's going to have the most erosion. Use those cement trucks as scales. This is the full wide out here of how wide that spillway actually is. And it's still, you just can't get the size of it. This is what it looks like from the ground. It's a tidal wave pouring over there. It's only a foot deep at the time of this video. Also another mistake, they were planning on only 12,000 feet coming over that spillway, but the powerhouse at the bottom is backed up. They had to turn off another 12,000 cubic feet. They plan to drain through that area. So it's going to send an additional 33,000 to 40,000 cubic feet over that emergency spillway. Totally blocked there. And you need to ask yourself that concrete they poured, is that going to hold? Is there going to be any more erosion? And another gargantuan mistake. Now the parking lot's flooding and that water's going over an area that is not reinforced. They didn't plan it to get that high to go over the parking lot area. Real time data here for you linked below for the Orville Dam Heights. That is going to go up to 907 feet. A full seven feet is going to come rolling over that wall for the next two days. You can believe the government when they say everything's under control, but I've just shown you four instances of mistakes that they are not counting on. You are on your own. You need to seriously consider emergency evacuation preparation right now. And while you're watching the video, for those of you not in the danger zone, please subscribe to my podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, as well as subscribe to my channel, Adapt 2030. Over the last few days, they've told you they're never going to use this emergency spillway. They had everything under control. Now they're using the emergency spillway because it's out of control. Timeline here, I put together the images I've been surfing around the net. This started on February 10th at 11 a.m. And we come back 36 hours later and look at the amount of erosion that's actually at the base of the dam. They're going to have to slow down the water flow because it's just eroding too much of the actual structural foundation that's holding back the earthen dam at Oroville. You know, all the conceptual drawings here of the emergency spillway don't take into consideration the parking lot overflowing. It only shows the emergency spillway in the approximate path of water. It is overflowing through that parking lot and that is not structurally sound. That has not been shored up or reinforced. That is an unexpected flood through that area. I did link below in the comment box so you can follow the real time water updated every hour. The flood you're looking for at 901 feet goes over that emergency spillway. They're looking for 907 feet at the apex, which means minimum six feet of actual thickness of water is going to be spilling over that wall for the next day and a half to two days. Additionally, the numbers they put out for the amount of spill coming over at 12,000 cubic feet per second is four times too low. It should be about 40,000 cubic feet approximately. What has happened is the lower spillway and the actual powerhouse backed up. It's clogged with debris. They're going to have to reroute that 12,000 cubic feet that they thought they could send through there back over the wall. That forced the closure of the hydroelectric plant at the base. You can see where the dam up occurred down there. Also, I want you to take note of the scale of this dam. There's helicopter landing pads. There's four helicopters with the bus down there. And when we take a wide out here, you can see the height of it. The dam's 700 feet tall and the amount of erosion coming off of the flow they let out there. I've been told they're going to scale back to 35,000 cubic feet because they're worried about the erosion taking so much of the heavy weight, dirt and stone down that it's causing structural integrity damage to the foundation of the dam holding this back. There's so much water weight behind it. 
that millions of ton of earth and rock being swept downstream. They need that to reinforce and push back. Okay, if you just joined this story, the original spillway started with a small hole like this. And when I say small hole, here's a gauge. Those two guys in the yellow down there, that's the size of this first small hole. Over the next couple of days, it widened. And they kept pouring water through it. And this was known back in 2013. You can see the structural damage in 2013. They knew it would be a problem. It's approximately in the same exact area. Now, that's just sloppy government bureaucracy right there. Anyway, the first small hole, you can see the amount of erosion that came out of the side, skirting down to the river. This is what it's turned into today. Just after the first water releases and concrete flying up that people notice, it's gone this far, this fast. They have to drain off for another two days. They're not going to be able to do that with the erosion happening. They're going to pull back to 35,000 cubic feet per second. They're really worried about the base of the dam coming away and not being able to shore up that wall. That's scary. I put the blue lines on here so you can see the amount of erosion. If this is what it did in 36, what if they let it go another 36? That's going to be off the picture to the right. I added the yellow arrows for you here so you can easily see where the structural damage is. The concrete spillway is 100% compromised. The water's not really flowing down there so much any longer. It's sort of free flowing down the mountain at the moment. This is just compressed earth and rock. It's not a granite base as it would be at Hoover Dam or something. This was a man-made built dam of compressed earth. Now the outflow coming right now, five times more water is going out of the spillway down the mountain, eroding than there actually is in the spillway. You see that yellow arrow just at the edge of the wall there. That's all that's left. Damaged concrete spillways, and it's creating rapids. It's actually turned into a full-blown waterfall where the erosion is cut in so deeply that water is not even in the concrete. This is how much water was flowing initially in the very small hole in the first day, but they just kept letting it run. And now it's turning into several sets of rapids as it gets toward the bottom there into the river. Before and after shot here, above and below. So the question is, even at 35,000 cubic feet, how long can they let that run before they need to turn that completely off and put everything over the emergency spillway? This has been an untested thing that they said would never be used and it wouldn't have to be. They even told you yesterday they wouldn't use it. And then suddenly, oh my God, they're going to put four times more water over it than they said they would. And this water is going to flow late into Monday. I bet it goes into Tuesday because it's still draining off after the enormous rains they just had. And there's more rain on the way by Thursday. So even if it stops on Monday, it'll start raining Wednesday night again. What happens when it fills the second time? Because this new storm coming in was as intense as the last. And this thing's already full. So it's not going to have to raise 20 feet before it breaches again. It's just going to start raining and breach right away. And even on Friday, they did. The giant reservoir will not flow over the emergency spillway. They're wasting your time of you preparing to get ready to get out of your houses and flee if this turns into something like they have seen dam collapses before. Spillway hasn't been used since 1968, nor inspected for usage. They never intended for the parking lot to flood and actually be part of the spillway. They thought they had it under control earlier today. And the way these angles are set up for the news broadcast is disturbing to say the least, because when you look at it from a lot of the mainstream news reports, it shows like little tiny angles like, oh, that could be something, you know, in a little small river I'm used to seeing. But the reality is, the size of this is so large that vehicles and people just disappear into the background. You can't even see them. That's how large the, the fall off of this thing itself is 100 feet. And it's going to be six to seven feet deep rolling down this mountainside. This is the very first hour it started pouring over. They had planned for that road to act as a second buttress to create a second waterfall slowing the flow so it would gently roll downhill. Now when you look at that, it doesn't really look that big. Until you take a look at where they were putting emergency concrete and boulders in yesterday morning, right at the edge where you know it's going to swirl right there. It's always where there's a lot of compression and water flow right at the edges. We all know how large cement trucks are. 
And then we wide out here to the actual size and the width of this overflow area and those cement trucks disappear into ant size at the bottom there. They're trying to concrete in this area 12 hours before. You need to ask yourself seriously, do you think this is going to hold? Because on the wide out here, all that scraped out dirt is where they were trying to clear the trees out. To the left, you can see those giant kilovolt power line poles, and you know how those are 100 feet high. Now, they definitely didn't count on the parking lot being inundated and overswept and becoming part of the emergency flow. Again, you look at the scale of this. That road, these are cars and 18-wheel trucks and dump trucks down there. They look like toys. And now the water starts to flow. Is it going to hold or not? Because suddenly now the parking lot's inundated and it's starting to flow over. The road broke away instantly where they thought that was actually going to be part of the structural reinforcement that would help cause a second waterfall. It's gone. So for a size comparison, look far over on the right near the guardrail. You can see that shadow that looks like there's a person standing there. That's the scale of it for you. This is looking downstream. This is the very first two minutes that it started to flow over. The guys were there. They were taking some images. This is what went all the newspapers. It looks pretty placid, doesn't it? Until you realize when you get at the bottom where they start to run now, the earthen spillway. And then right next to that, that's a 120-foot tall, high-voltage cable tower. Closer up here for you. This is just in the very first hour. It's starting to already flow in. Look at the debris clogging up through there. Aerial view here, it actually expanded the erosion later in the day. That's why they cut back the flow. Now moving down towards Sacramento, they're opening everything up. All the floodgates are open. They should have put out an emergency evacuation order days ago for you to at least get ready to prepare. And right now they should be telling you, you got to have your car gassed up and you need to have everything packed and ready to leave. And you should be taking this warning very seriously. This is the water release coming down through the Yuba River this morning. And what I'm talking about breaking is something like this in the Teton Dam. Where the overflow here, it started as just a single one inch crack. And you know how water works. It keeps expanding, keeps expanding. And there's so much pressure behind this thing. It is completely full. It's five cubic kilometers of water behind this thing pushing on it. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And please take a moment to jump over to Trade Genius. They are trading on the grand solar minimum losses for our agriculture. And if this dam does indeed break, I'm going to say a quarter of California's agriculture will be offline for at least a year. This wave of water that will come down and wipe everything clean, A, will wipe the topsoil away. It's going to destroy train tracks. Highways are going to get washed away. Bridges will be washed away. Farming equipment, any kind of irrigation any kind of irrigation canals, piping, anything. It's going to be an inland tsunami with a two to 400 plus foot wave coming down and wiping everything clean in its path. California government, shame on you for not even telling the people what's going on. That's your job. You're supposed to take care of the people and you're not doing your job. You should be out of office after this event.